Good morning and happy Sabbath. I want to thank you for joining us here at Tabernacle HBA Church. I'm sorry for a little technical and difficulties, but welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, we're happy that you've chosen to be with us here, and we encourage you to join in on the discussion, and I'm saying discussion, uh, whether you're on Facebook or YouTube, just jump in and ask a question or make a comment. Uh, we're studying um, lesson number 12, and so if you have a question or a comment, you can text um, the word Sabbath School to 855-997-1170. Uh, you can also post the comments in YouTube or the Facebook chat. Now, if you're in the South Florida area, I want to welcome you and invite you to come to Tabernacle within our congregation because right now we are having a Sabbath school discussion. So if you want it to be even more interactive, come on out to the church uh, so that you can have a dis Sabbath school discussion. So uh, we have our panelists here. We are ready to begin. But before we begin, let's have a word of prayer. Uh, Brother Duke, can I ask you to pray at this time? Let us all bow our heads. Almighty God, we are so thankful for bringing us safely here this morning, uh, bringing us safely through another week where we can come and worship you, O oh God. Oh, Father, we ask that you would be with us in this Sabbath school worship service. And Lord, as we are about to begin this panel discussion on lesson number 12, what an important uh, lesson it is. Uh, it's a call for us to stand, O oh God. Yes, we need to stand in the midst of all the forces of evil against us. We need to stand, O oh God. So be with us in this discussion, dear God. May your Holy Spirit guide, O oh Lord. <coughs> we pray for all those who are listening uh, online. We welcome our online uh, members, friends, and visitors. Uh, this is a very important lesson, dear God. So we hope that this will be a blessing to all and that we will heed the instruction to stand and how we can stand against the evil one. We ask these blessings in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, amen. I, I hope we are working on our little difficulties. We are hearing a little um, echo, so hopefully they can, uh, hopefully you're not hearing that echo, but we're hearing that echo here. All right, so our first question is going to go to Elder Fritz, but I'm going to read the memory verse first, and it's a popular one. You probably know it. It's taken from Ephesians 6, verses 10 and 11. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. Put on, and say it with me, I know you know it, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. Right? Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. As I was um, studying the lesson, I, I thought to myself, if you like to fight, <laughs> this is the lesson for you. Because um, there's a lot of battle imagery in the, uh, in the lesson this week, and we're going to get into who we're fighting against and who is on our side and who is against us, all right? So our first question is for Elder Fritz. As I said, what should Paul's warning we fight not against flesh and blood, but against spiritual, supernatural enemies teach us about where our only hope of victory is. This is Paul's uh, warning that we fight not against flesh and blood. Tell us. Good morning, uh, esteemed panelists. Good morning to those viewing online. Thank you, uh, Sister Dorsey, for this question. Um, now, let's go to, uh, we'll start with uh, Ephesians 6, verse 12. Ephesians 6, verse 12, where Paul says, For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. So now Paul, say, Paul says, we do not wrestle. So then, then the opposite is that we do wrestle. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. So we do wrestle. So wrestling, in a wrestling match, there is two opposing teams, right? Yeah. And they trying each to pin the other one. 
So Paul is using that imagery to say that there is a warfare going on. It's a spiritual warfare. But Paul is saying, despite of everything that we experience every day at work, at home, at the church, in the supermarket, uh, 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 those things we are seeing every day in Maui, in Morocco, in Libya, Paul is saying that, yes, those are a smoke screen. We do not wrestle against flesh and blood. So when we react to flesh and blood, we are against the Bible saying we do not wrestle against flesh and blood. So then our prayer for people, for situation, should increase more when we understand those spiritual warfare, what we're seeing, that, 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 that what the enemy allows us to see, it's not really what's happening. There's something that's happening behind it. One way we can see in the book of Job, Job experienced a loss of all that he had. Yes. He experienced loss of his children. He experienced the disrespect of his wife. Mm -hmm. He experienced the accusation of his friends. Job did not know what was happening. S years later, we know who was behind it. Yes. Satan, the arch enemy, was behind it. Why? Two things. J God had already said Job was a just man. He wanted Job to know you're not really a just man. Two, he wanted Job to lose his trust in yes. God. Yes. Where's God? All those things happen. You see, he's doing all those things, but yet he wanted Job to say, where is God when all those things are happening? Well, Job thought that it was God that was doing it. Job friend thought it's because Job sinned. Job wife wanted Job to just curse God. And that's what the enemy wants to do. But there is hope. If you only talk about the problems in the Bible without the hope, it leaves us what? Hopeless. Her big brother, Jesus Christ, he always defeat the enemy. And that's what makes the enemy mad. Because when he was in heaven, he defeated him and one third of the angel. But you know what that means if he defeated the enemy with one third of the angel? It means there is two thirds of the angel that's still loyal to God. That's go. on our side. There you go. And that's good news. Amen. He defeated him when he came on earth. Because in heaven, Satan probably saying that Jesus had an advantage because they were in heaven. He claimed to be the, the, the prince and ruler of the earth. Jesus came to earth and he defeated him when he was a baby, when he was trying to kill him through King Herod. He defeated him when he was in the wilderness, when Jesus was powerless, hungry for 40 days, yet still defeat him. And on the cross, Jesus defeated him, showing that the law of God triumphed the law against the law of self. The law of love triumphed against the law of selfishness and fear. The law of service triumphed against the law of self-exaltation. So Jesus Christ defeated the enemy. Then, then I'll read before I quote. And that's what Paul can say in Romans 8 verses 37. He says, yet in all these things, we are more than what? Than conquerors. But we are not more than conquerors through our own strength, which is our problem with our own strength, our own power, our might. We are more than conquerors through him who loves us because he already gained the victory. And that what he's saying is because he gained the victory, all we have to do is join in the winning team. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Any other? In, in Sabbath um, lesson, it also gave the example with Elisha about being able to pull back that veil. Now, we are not seeing it, but we know, and I'm glad we got this example. If we could pull back the veil to know both sides, those we can see what who is uh, against us sometimes, but also to see who is for us. So we have that hope that you said, that there is hope. Uh, Christ made that first victory, and now we too can know that we will have, we can have that same victory. If I may add one small thing. You see, the enemy knows he cannot defeat Jesus and his mighty angels. That's why they say when they come, they come as legion. If you think about legion, it's three to five thousand. They won't come one. They has to come as legion. But Jesus, one angel, is more than powerful to 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 the number of of, of legions that that that's out there to to mess with our peace. Amen. Amen. All right. Let's go on to question number two for Brother Ana. What are some of the ways that you personally 
have experienced the reality not only of this cosmic conflict, but of the victory we can claim for ourselves in Jesus. Uh, why is understanding his victory for us so foundational to our hope and experience? Good morning and happy Sabbath, every, everyone. For those of us who are online, it's wonderful to be in the house of God today. Amen. What do I personally experience about this cosmic conflict? I was born in sin and shaped in iniquity, as mentioned in uh, Romans chapter 7, verses 19 through 21. But not only was I born in sin and shaped in iniquity, I personally experience a daily struggle. I, I experience a daily struggle with the things that I should do. For example, improper time management. And I'm going to be personal now. Spending too much time on social media. The things in, in, in chapter, in verses 19, it says, of, of Romans chapter 7, it says, For the good that I would do, I do not. But the evil which I would not, that I do. Now, if I do that which I would not, it is no more that, you know, it, it is that sin dwelleth in, within me. And I find that a law of good and evil presents itself and it's warring one against the other within me now I, I already mentioned temp time management you know I struggle with judging people the way they look and I struggle with my own racial bias and I'm sure some of you out there today may be struggling with the same things or similar things and we call these the besetting sins. So the, the, cosmic, the, the, the cosmic conflict, it, it's a real struggle for me on a daily basis. But ladies and gentlemen, it doesn't end there. The question asks, what about the reality? You know, about this victory. Now, because I know that I can gain the victory through Jesus, I now come daily before God, and I submit myself daily before God. And, and Jesus gave us an example. This example he gave us was that he went early in the morning before it was day. He went into a solitary place. Not only did he pray, but he agonized before his father for mankind. And so I have this example, ladies and gentlemen, to agonize before God, to submit myself daily before God to ask him to direct me and to give me strength, you know, to give me strength so that I can overcome the different ailments that, that I struggle with on a daily basis. And in uh, one of the struggles that, I, that, that, that may seemingly try to overcome me, I'm reminded in, in John chapter 16 verse 23 where jesus says he says ladies and gentlemen in this world you will have tribulation however rest assured it and, and, and i'll read it it says these things i have spoken unto you that you may have peace what does it mean to have peace imagine you're struggling with different temptations but yet God is saying through his word this morning, you shall have peace. When you come daily before me, before God, and submit yourself, you will have peace. Why will you have peace? Rest assured, you will have tribulation in this world, but be of good cheer. I, the Lord Jesus, have overcome the world. So if Jesus has overcome the world, he's providing us with these tools that we need so that we can have peace. We can now have this victory, as I've mentioned before. And what does this give us? The last part of the question. This gives us a hope. A hope that we, all, we, we are not fighting a losing battle, as, as Elder mentioned earlier. We are not fighting a losing battle, but we are more than overcomers through him who loved us. And I'll end this by saying, 
we have this hope, this sure foundation that's built upon this rock. The rock that is Jesus Christ our Lord. And, ladies and gentlemen, he won't fail. He won't fail. He won't fail. There's a, a, a sentence that says, this rock on which I stand, when everything around me is shaken, I have, I have never been more glad. I put my faith in Jesus because he will never let me down. He's faithful through all generations. Ladies and gentlemen, he won't fail. Amen, amen. I so appreciate um, that example that you gave of, you know, those... The reality, and it's funny, sometimes you think it has to be some great big sin, right? But the cosmic conflict that we are uh, experiencing is individual. Yes. And so I, I appreciate that you personalized it. And, and, and as you were giving your personal example, I, you know, you start to think of your own examples of the areas that um, God is trying to uh, lead us and his angels are trying to lead me personally. And and you real, you feel that that wrestling going on. Yes. Brother Duke? Uh, yes, I'd like to say this, and that is, imagine a country going to war, or imagine we enter into a fight, and before we even enter the fight or go to war, we, we are assured of victory. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Just imagine that. That will give us more confidence to fight, not so? Because we know we are going to win, and that is what the victory that Jesus Christ have accomplished already. That's what he does for us. Yes, we may, uh, the devil may knock us down in the fight, but we can get back up in assurance that we are going to win. So when we, f when we fall in this fight against evil forces on a daily basis, when we fall, let us not be discouraged. Some of us may even be, uh, be killed in this fight, but Victory is assured. Victory is assured. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. I want to go to question number three and just ask it in general. The, the topic of our lesson is the call to stand. What does that mean? I mean, when you think about battle and fighting, it's more than just standing there, isn't it? What does it mean to stand? Paul, Paul, uh, uh, in Ephesians, say, put on the whole armor of God. Yes. Put on the whole armor of God. Later on, you see Paul say, you gotta, you gotta be abiding in the truth. Mm -hmm. You gotta make sure that you have faith. But first, you gotta be able to abide in the truth. Everything that we say, if you're not abiding in the truth, you gotta make prayer. You have to make all those things become vital. As our brother Raymond said earlier, early in the morning, yes, Jesus stood, and after that, Jesus went and prayed. Jesus went and shared the gospel because Jesus understood we do not fight against flesh and blood. So yes. now you have to spread the gospel. There is a better way, yes. right, to be able to stand. You stand on your knees. That the, the Christian Amen. in the world, you stand. With your weapon, yes. you stand ready to fight. With the Christian world, you stand on your knees. When you stand on your knees, that's when you stand. Amen. 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 All right. So again, more more uh, army and uh, and fight language, and it just kind of shows us how important it is um, that we are prepared. Right? We're talking about starting out the morning on our knees. We can't just show up to battle. Just think. You can't just decide, like, you know, today I'm going to go and fight. No, you have to have some sort of preparation. It has to have some sort of um, uh, getting ready in some, in some way. And so we're encouraged to um, prepare by in, uh, in prayer and in studying God's word. All right. So let's go on to um, question number four. Uh, what should the reality of these supernatural evil powers against whom we ourselves, we agree, we're utterly helpless, teach us regarding why we must grasp hold of the Lord Jesus, who is not only greater than these powers, but has already defeated them? Yes. Brother Duke? Uh, yes, we must grasp hold of Jesus 
in our fight against supernatural powers. As a matter of fact, we must first be aware that we are indeed fighting against evil powers, as was mentioned earlier. We should be on the alert, but not afraid of our powerful enemies. Jesus is present with us, even though we cannot see him with our naked eye. He is present with us. If God should open our spiritual eyesight uh, for a moment, as he did with Elisha, <coughs> as he did with Elisha's servant, when the servant thought that they were outnumbered and surrounded by armies of the evil powers, but when Elisha prayed and God opened his eyes and he saw the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire round about <laughs> of Elijah. Let me read that again. The mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire around, around Elijah. If God opened our spiritual eyesight, Amen. we would see powerful heavenly beings fighting alongside us. Yes. <laughs> In addition, God has provided us with the finest weaponry, his own armor, <laughs> the armor of God. The armor of God. We have the armor of God that he has provided for us. And what is this armor of God in which we should stand against the supernatural evil powers? What is this armor of God? It is, uh, it is in Ephesians 6, 14 and 14 to 18. In a cap hear what it says. Hear what it reads. Stand therefore having your loins girded about with truth. <laughs> And having on the breastplate of righteousness. <laughs> and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. <laughs> Above all, the shield of faith. <laughs> wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. And take the helmet of salvation. <laughs> and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. The Bible. <laughs> Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit. Brothers and sisters, when Jesus walked on earth among men, he defeated the evil powers by putting on the whole armor of God. <laughs> Truth, righteousness, peace, faith, salvation, and the Bible, and also with prayer. The whole armor of God, Jesus was able to defeat the evil one. Uh, we can do the same by following Jesus' example. Amen, amen. amen. I want to read a, a quote from the lesson. Did I just lose it? And it was saying that um, standing is not a relaxed stance, right? Sometimes you think if you're standing, um, oh, you're just kind of like standing. Mm -hmm. But in this sense, it says, to stand then is to be vigorously engaged in battle, Amen. employing every weapon in close order combat, a point that's obvious from the military image that Paul is using, um, and standing firm in one spirit with one mind striving side by side for the faith of the gospel. So it's not just a standing there, it's in vigorous battle. Now we're not used to that anymore because nowadays people when they're fighting, they're just throwing bombs and missiles over. Mm -hmm. But back in this, in Paul's time, fighting meant close combat, hand-to-hand -hand battle. And we have to recognize that the devil is still fighting that kind of fight right. and so we have to be able to stand and vigorously engage with the enemy but i also say uh, as brother duke was talking is that a lot of times if you're not preparing you get defeated yes mm -hmm. yes you prepare so that you can be under attack 
not on the def defense. Because yeah, yeah. yeah. a lot of times, if you don't prepare for the enemy, when the enemy come, you will be defeated. Mm -hmm. So when Brother Duke is saying you got to put on the whole armor of God, sometimes we are too busy. The devil, the enemy, he do what we call distraction. Mm -hmm. If we remember the way Middle Persia, uh, Babylon was destroyed, when the enemy was outside the wall, they were making preparation to invade the city. They were out there having fun. They were out there, out there having a party. And when the enemy come, they were not ready. So God is telling all of us, make sure you put on the whole armor of God. So when you wake up in the morning, don't wait until the sickness come or you're experiencing a divorce you or your kids leaving the church acting go. up. That's when I'm going to pray. That's when I'm going to come to church mm -hmm. as the elder to pray. No. Mm -hmm. Wake up every morning, pray. Amen. Share the gospel. Yes. Because the people you're not sharing the gospel with, those those are your enemies later on. Yeah. So if you're not sharing the gospel for their art to be transformed, then they're gonna they're gonna be the one attacking you. You know, you wanna have peace. Read the word of God. You Amen. gotta abide in the truth. Amen. Too many of us, our truth is whatever the culture says. Our truth is whatever's happening. But those people' heart is satanic. We, they do not they they fight, do not fight against flesh and blood how are you not allowing the word of god to be the truth that govern you but what circumstances what people culture says so we have to put on the whole armor of god amen. if you want to be victorious in that warfare that we got involved in amen amen, amen. appreciate that all right our final question um of brother Aina or anyone how do we best discern and reject the schemes of the devil or the wiles of the devil we know we know they're out there how do we discern them and then reject them ladies and gentlemen the the bible says in first peter chapter 5 verse 8 it says be sober be vigilant because your adversary our adversary the devil is as a roaring lion walking about seeking whom he may devour what does he mean by roaring and walking about he means that in every facet of our lives every corner of our lives the devil is going to put some temptation he's going to put something there to distract us from serving god something there to distract us elder as you mentioned from getting up early in the morning to go and pray something elder duke He's going to distract us from putting on the whole armor of God. Something that the, every morning that you wake up, the devil is going to find whether it's a water pipe that is busted or something is wrong with one of your children or something is wrong with a family member or, as, as was mentioned earlier on about social media, social media becomes an issue or something to do with the job or a boss or whatever the situation is the devil is going to create it days before sometime just to get you distracted because he knows that you need to be on point studying your sabbath school lesson studying the word of god ensuring that your mind's eye is opened by the spirit of the lord he wants to distract you from all of that so ladies and gentlemen how do we discern we we have to put on the whole armor of god we have to remember that in John chapter 17, verse 17, it says, Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Amen. Not, not, not the, 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 word, the word of the word. Words of the world is truth. No. Not the, not, not the, uh, the social media is truth. No. Social media can be fake also. Amen. Let us be aware that all these are distractions. So we have to be sober-minded. We have to be busy, visual. We have to be ready to hear the voice of God saying, this is the way, walk in it. So when you, when, when you get up early in the morning and you submit yourself to God, you shall hear, according to Isaiah chapter 30, verse 21, you shall hear a voice behind you saying, this is the way, walk in it. When you turn to the right and when you turn to the left. Amen. Brother Duke, you were going to comment? Another powerful way to... Uh, discern, uh, discern and reject the schemes of the devil is to know the word of God. Yes. Yes. As was mentioned, remember that is also one of the armor that yes. you put on. Oh, yes. 
oh, the yeah. sword of the spirit, the which is the word spirit. of God. Amen. We know that today we have so much deception going on mm. in our world. Not only deception, but misinterpretation of skip, scripture. Yes. <laughs> yes. False yes. teachers and false prophets mm -hmm. are all over our world today. Mm. And uh, we are living in a generation where uh, people are, are more interested in learning what's going on on the internet, learning what's going on out there, what has been put on out there, than the word of God. <laughs> So, so, so when we know the word of God, we are able to, to find and, and identify the deception of the evil one. Yes. Right. Yes. It's, like, uh, it's like trying to find, uh, you know, forge money yeah. when, these, when people are uh, trying to uh, make a dollar or make a $50 look as real, yeah. right? And uh, uh, the bank tellers, they have to distinguish between the, the real dollar or the real $50 or $100 yeah. and the fake one. Yes. So what in their training, what they do, they train the, these bank employees to study that real dollar, real good. Study the, the truth, real good. And by studying the real dollar, real good, you are able to identify the fake and the forged. Huh? So it's the same thing when we are fighting this battle. When we study the word of God, Amen. we are a and we know what God says in his word, we are able to identify the untruth from the truth. We are them. able to separate. Yes. And that is that is one way we can discern and reject the schemes of the devil out there. Amen. Yes. Amen. Um, Amen. I also wanted to say that I watch enough enough animal kingdom. And you've seen a lion. When lion about to attack their prey, they use what you call diversion tactic. Mm -hmm. So what you do is try to find a way to separate the the weak from, from the, the group. Mm -hmm. You notice you notice what's happening mm -hmm. since COVID nineteen. Mm -hmm. Separate the weak mm -hmm. from the group mm -hmm. so that you don't put the whole army of God. Mm -hmm. See, once I'm able to separate you, once I'm able to see something wrong with the yes. group. I don't home. need to. I don't need the group. Mm -hmm. I outgrow the group. Comfort at home. Yes. 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 Make you feel comfortable. Make you lag behind, mm -hmm. so that then now you're ready to be attacked. Wow. See, the enemy is very cunning. What he does is, you don't really need prayer. You're good. You have your education now. Mm. You Mercy. don't need the church because look at the church Mercy. they're a bunch of hypocrites yes, yes. so that you lag behind he yes. can attack you easily so remember what the bible say the bible say he might it say he's a roaring lion seeking he, whom he may not devour. he might devour seeking who he will devour Amen. so what the enemy has done is make you feel like you don't need the whole armor of god mercy you need artificial equipment to fight that spiritual warfare. We cannot fight a spiritual warfare while the devil is bringing bazooka and we're bringing knives to a spiritual warfare. And many of us, our family, our marriages, our finance are under attack is because we don't want to put the whole armor of God until it's too late. When we are at war, that's when we decide to go to the store to buy equipment. They say, mm. we sold out. Have mercy. Have yeah, mercy. Wow. Yeah. wow. Have mercy. Have so mercy. I, I wanted to say, um, it said here in the lesson, Satan watches eagerly to find Christians off their guard. Yes. 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 So he's not out there trying to get the people who are already with him mm -mm. so it's for us as christians and and we see it so often people who used to walk with the lord and apparently they were caught off guard as you say whether it's education or feeling uh we can do good and so we don't have to come to church uh, and so a lot of times it's in different ways that we are caught off guard as christians um, not prepared and I, I you wanted to say something yes. real quickly mm -hmm. the, 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 the the this idea of self aggrandizement we, we saw it in in, in the, the story story of Job, but we also saw it where when Satan was cast out of heaven this self aggrandizement where I can this 
I can do this and I can do that. Here in the United States and other parts of the world, we are, we are taught to do it our way. We, we, you should have things your way. It all comes from the devil. It's a subtle distraction to make you believe in yourself, thinking that within you dwelleth good. But the Bible says, in man dwelleth no good thing. So we should rely on God, who is good, to inspire us and to deliver, deliver us. Amen. Amen. So I, we so carefully protect the things that we want, right? Yes. We go into our houses, we lock the door. We, remember when they used to have the, the thing for the cars? We're protecting all of our physical properties and all of our, you know, everything is locked up. And you, at your office, you lock your drawer. You yes. don't want anybody to go into your drawer and, and, and whatever the case may be. But we don't take that same kind of um, careful approach to our spiritual lives. Have mercy, Lord. We just kind of leave it open, thinking like we're going to be all right. But let's not do that, brothers and sisters. Let's keep an eye on the things um, that are trying to attack us and let us be prepared and let us stand um, as, as the lesson has encouraged us to do. So I want to thank each and every one of you for, for joining us here. I thank you, the panelists, for being uh, uh, prepared this morning to share their messages and to even um, give their own personal accounts of some of the challenges that they're going through. Um, so at this time, I'm going to just ask, uh, we're, you're probably going to collect your, uh, the offering is going to, the Sabbath school offering is going to be collected soon. Um, and I just also wanted to say that this week we're not having, um, or no, not next week, we're not going to be having the, uh, the uh, breakfast, Sabbath school breakfast, but the following week, the last Sabbath of the month, we're going to have the Sabbath school breakfast. Um, continue to study your Sabbath school lessons, brothers and sisters, so that um, you too will be able to stand when the time comes. So let's bow our heads. Heavenly Father, we are thankful for your love, your kindness, your mercies towards us. Father, thank you for this message this week. Help us to uh, recognize that we are not fighting against our, our bosses. We're not fighting against the challenges of the person in the car next to us. We're fighting against principalities and spiritual oh, yes. wickedness in high places. Uh, help us, Lord, to know that we can be victorious, though. And so we have to prepare ourselves by studying your word, studying the word, and uh, in constant prayer with you. Forgive us, Lord, for the ways that we have been distracted and help us to not only prepare ourselves, but to uh, give a light to those all around us. Bless us, Lord. Keep us. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.
Good morning, brothers and sisters. Good morning, and welcome those of you who are joining us online. My name is Elder Paul Walker, and I am a mental health specialist. I've been working in the field of mental health for the past 20 years uh, with Jackson Community Mental Health Center. And this morning, our health nugget is focusing on mental health but most people when we talk about mental health they usually see it from a psychological and emotional part as if mental health does not also include the physical part and so today I want to focus on the basics from start start by looking at the brain because that's the that's the that's the central part where your mental health is going to come into, into focus. It starts with your brain. So let's look at the human, let's, let's look at some facts about the brain. The human brain is, uh, it weighs about three pounds. It's like uh, the size of a cantaloupe that is full with jello. So imagine a cantaloupe about, this, uh, um, about three pounds in weight, and inside of it is filled with jello. If you shake it, then you, you, you can actually feel it. So sometimes when a, when a person um, gets a, a, a hit in the head, sometimes it's that, it's that, cert, that sudden shake that, that, that the brain gets that sometimes that can create a problem. Next slide, please. Now, the brain um, consists of 2% two, two of your body's weight and it consumes 20% of the amount of oxygen and calories that you take in. The brain consumes that amount. Um, a piece of brain tissue the size of a grain of sand contains over 100,000 neurons. Those neurons are, the, are, 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 are is that chemical inside the brain that, that makes the connections. When, 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 when you do an activity, those neurons, uh, they, they lit up the brain, uh, almost like when you plug in a Christmas tree and all those lights come on. That's how active it tells you what activity your, your, um, the brain is, um, is undergoing. So the more activity that your brain is going through, it's the better it is for it because more areas of the brain is being lit. You know, and so you want to make certain that those neurons are, are, are being very active and, and, um, and as a result, you, we can see that the brain is being uh, engaged in activity. Next slide. Now, the brain also is, is a very powerful, powerful tool that we have. A computer with the capacity, uh, with the capability of the human brain would require 10 mega uh, watts of energy output of a, a, that's about the, the, the output of a small hy hydroelectric power plant. Now, when it comes on to the human brain, it, it only requires 10 watts, uh, the amount used by a LED bulb. You know those LED bulbs that, that, we, that, that you buy nowadays in, uh, at, um, at, at um, Home Depot and so on, right? They, they are very bright, and, and they, don't use a, they don't use a lot of, a lot of energy. And it's the same thing with the, with the brain. You can see that just, 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 just 10 watts alone is able to lit up the brain. So can you imagine the amount of, of power that you have in the brain? And then we don't use all of the brain at the same time. We just use a little bit. So if we were to use the entire capacity of the brain, we probably would not have control over it. So the Lord has made this, 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 uh, this brain of ours, this powerful tool that he has given us. And no wonder why they said the mind is a terrible thing to waste. The brain is a terrible thing to waste. If we don't use our brain wisely, we are wasting the power that God has given us in our mind. Next slide, please. Now, the brain has a great capacity to hold and store memories. Everything that you do, 
it is stored in some place in your brain, in, in the brain memory. Some might be stored in short-term memory, and others might be stored in long-term memory. Now, the brain memory capacity is about one petabyte, about the size of the entire World Wide Web. Think about that. The size of the World Wide Web is something that we can't even imagine. It is so broad. And the brain capacity is about one of that. Right? The average person has, two th uh, has um, 6,200 thoughts per day. That's the, at an average. Of course, you know, some people have more than others. <laughs> so can you imagine that amount of thought that has been happening every day? It's, it, and it has to be stored somewhere, and, some, and you have to be able at times to recall some of those thoughts that you had and some of those things that you, that you process. It is more powerful than any computer that you can think of, the brain that God has given us. That is why it is, it, it is a mistake for us not to use our brain as God has given us. When we allow the devil to take control over our brain, then we are wasting this great powerful tool that God has given us. Next slide, please. Now, like the body that is made up of a high percentage of liquid, the brain also um, is made up of... Uh, of 75% of water. And one of the greatest, one of the greatest um, disservice you can do to your brain is to allow your brain to be dehydrated. Because it, if it requires 75% of the liquid that we take in and we allow it to be dehydrated, then that's when we start to have issue with our brain. Even mild dehydration negatively affects the brain. So that is why it is important that you hydrate yourself. Drink enough water on a daily basis so that your brain can stay liquefied. We don't want any dry brains going around. right? We need the brains to be liquefied. A 2% de decrease in brain dehydration can result in short-term memory loss difficulty with math and computer um, operations when, we, when, when the brain is dehydrated. So if the kids is in school and they're not drinking sufficient water, you, see, you can see how they can have academic problem because their brain needs to be hydrated. Prolonged dehydration is also a problem. It, the longer you, you, the brain stays dehydrated, the greater the, 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 the problems that you're having or the damage that it can cause. Prolonged dehydration can cause brain cells to shrink in size and mass. Commonly happens to elderly individuals when you see that it looks like they are losing their memory, they can't remember things because their, their brain cells have been shrink. Now, Imagine that happening to a young person as well. That is a terrible thing to happen to a young person where they can't remember things, you know. So it's important that we keep our brain hydrated. Lack of mental clarity is also another thing that we call it brain fog. You know, the, the same thing can happen to, to, to us if the brain is dehydrated. So all of us make certain that we are taking in enough water Keep our brain hydrated and liquefied. We don't want to be walking around with dry brains. All right? Next slide. Here's an interesting fact. The brain itself cannot feel pain. The brain itself cannot feel pain. Um, I, 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 I remember that in the olden days, when, a, when, when an individual was considered to have some psychological issue. They used to drill holes in their head. Remember that? <laughs> that was all to, 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 release, to release those things. The brain does not, itself does not feel pain, but the brain feels the pain that every other organ is experiencing. That tells us how, how great a God we have, that he gives us that tool that of itself, it does not feel pain, but it can tell you anywhere you're feeling a pain. 
And because that message has to come back to the brain and that brain is going to tell you that you're having a pain on your toes. We are fearfully and wonderfully made. But we have to take care of this great organ called the brain that has been given to us. The brain detects pain in the rest of the bodies. But the brain itself cannot feel pain. That's why brain surgery can be conducted on patients who are aware that they're, being, that, that they're going through surgery. Isn't that amazing? Next slide, please. Having a good mental health, brothers and sisters, starts with having a healthy brain. Again, having a good mental health or mental wellness starts with having a healthy brain. So it, it, it is incumbent upon us to take care of our brain, to preserve our brain, to hydrate our brain, to take, make certain that our brain is always active. Inactive brain is wasting of brain cells. So make certain that your brain is active. And there are some simple things that you can do to boost your brain health. Join me next week when we'll talk about making a happy brain. May God bless you as you continue to be healthy, wise, and be faithful to him.